Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Truly, it's a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be thankful. And I just want to know how many thankful this morning because God woke you up and God started you on your way. You may have not had all your strength and help, but he allowed you a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. And that's enough to be thankful for this morning. I'm excited because uh, God has allowed us another opportunity to come and worship and praise his holy and divine name. And this morning we uh, are grateful just to be here and, uh, for the weather, the cool weather and the sunshine. And uh, we just thank God for the birds singing and everything that's going on around us. Before we get started, I have a few announcements that need to be made. Uh, Bethel will host a food box drink giveaway on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming, November the 22nd, starting at 12 noon. This will be a drive through an event. Now, you, whoever comes, drive through, pop your trunk, open your door, and we'll put the stuff in there. Uh, you don't have to get out your car. This event is sponsored by the Lee County First Steps and Save the Children. If you have any questions or uh, concerns about the time or anything, con contact Sister Carletta Israel. Contact Sister Carletta Israel. Uh, she's spearheading uh, this event. And let us please pray for uh, Sister Mitchell, Tra uh, Trinette's mother, who's in the hospital. We also like to pray for Sister Jenny Brown Burroughs, Brother Calvin Rivers, uh, Sister Daisy Presley, and all of those who are sick and shut in. Remember to pay for our bereaved families as they go through their grief. Uh, next Sunday, we will not have a drive-in service. We will be inside uh, the sanctuary. We invite you to view uh, us on Facebook. Uh, next Sunday starts the Advent season. Uh, and there's an Advent program that needs to be taken, that, that, that's going to happen uh, every Sunday up until Christmas. Uh, we light the candle and there's an Advent speech. So we're asking for participants. We're asking for participants to come and share with us to choose a Sunday. We would like for maybe our children to do it, but if we can't get our children to do it, maybe one family uh, would like to do it. Uh, I will supply you with the readings if you let me know that you want to participate, and uh, I will supply you with the readings for that particular Sunday. We still will be on Facebook and conference call next Sunday. Uh, the PPRC will meet next Sunday at 11 o'clock. The PPRC will meet next Sunday at 11 o'clock here at the church. Here at the church next Sunday at 11 o'clock is business of importance. And I want to wish Brother Elijah McCullough a happy birthday. And I'm sorry if I didn't know other members' birthday during the month of November, but we wish you a happy birthday and happy, happy anniversary for the ones who are celebrating a birthday and an anniversary in November. We pray that God will uh, continue to let you see another day, another birthday next year. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we're just glad to be here. We're excited this morning because God has given us another chance at what we call life. So now we go go into uh, uh, our service. We have a prayer, then the scripture, then the affirmation of faith, the glory for tree and then a song, and then I'll come back with the sermon. So if you have some prayer concerns, let us lift them up. Those persons who we would like for us to pray for, lift them up uh, so that God will know that we're asking for prayer for them. So let us go to the throne of grace. God, here we are on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. We come, oh God, with open hearts, open minds. But most of all, we come because we're thankful for all that you must allow us to have. We're thankful for your grace and your mercy. We're thankful for Jesus Christ, your son, who died on Calvary's cross that we might have the tree of life. We're thankful this morning for a reasonable portion of health, life, and strength. We thank you for another opportunity to try to get it right. And God, while we're here, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit down among this place this morning, oh God, that we may feel your presence that the word may go forth and that somebody who doesn't know you in the part of their sin may cry out, I yield, I yield, I want to be saved. God, thank you for each member here that's represented. Thank you for the families here at Bethel and the friends of Bethel and the people that lives in the community of Bethel. Lord, we just ask you to move in this country. 
We know this country is in an uncertain time right now, but God, we know that you are an on time, God. We know that you hold all of us in the palm of your hands and you'll not let us fall, that you're there to pick us up when we're down. You are there, oh God, to wrap your loving arms around us when we're sad and when we're in the comfort. Your spirit is always with us. And for God, that God, we say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for who you are, not for the things that you've done, just because you're God and you're God all by yourself. We just thank you right now. Thank you, God, for creating us, blowing the breath of life into us, that we are able to stand before men and women and declare that there is a Savior that can save anybody because he saved a wretch like us. God bless this service. Bless me as I stand before your people to break the bread of life. Give me what I need. Give this congregation and this community what they need, oh God, because you said in your word you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll be with us even to the end of time. And for that, God, we're grateful. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let every heart amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew, the 25th chapter, uh, verses 31 through 46. Matthew, the tw 25th chapter, verses 31 through 46. Let's slide over a little bit. That's Matthew, the 25th chapter starting at verse 31. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me there. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. So my word may be a little different from yours, but all of it is God, holy and divine word. Verse 31 says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd separate the sheep the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left then the king will say to those on his right come you have been blessed by my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you thirst or thirst and gave you something to drink? And when... They did, we, and when we did see you, a stranger invited you in, naked, clothed you. When did we see you sick and in prison and you, you came to us? The king answered and said to them, truly I said to you to the extent that did it one for these brothers of mine, even for the least of these, you did it for me. Then he would also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accusers, warns, and to eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me in. Naked, and you didn't clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Those who will go away in eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we'll confirm our faith. Affirmation of faith can be found on page 881. 881 in the United Methodist Hymnals. 881. If you have it, let's repeat it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who's conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. The glory for tree. selection by our ensemble and then I'll come back with the morning message. The morning message comes from Psalms 100 this morning. morning our sermon scripture will come from the 100 psalms psalms 100 psalms 100 have your bibles turn with me to psalms 100 it's the psalms of thanksgiving the psalms of thanksgiving and it reads as follows shout 
joyful to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing, knowing that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. This is God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. I want to use for a brief topic this morning. Be thankful. Be thankful this morning. Be thankful. As we look around our world and see what all is going on, we still have an opportunity to give God thanks because of all that he has brought us through. Uh, even when I was growing up, my parents used to always tell me that no matter what folk do for you, always tell them thank you. But we have some folk in this world that who are, uh, I believe, just ungrateful. They won't tell you thank you for anything. If you go to hold the door open for me and walk on in without saying a word, uh, whatever you do, they don't say anything. But I'm thankful this morning for whatever somebody do for me. Whether you open the door, whether you call me, whether you give me a compliment, I'm always appreciative of what folk do for me. But most of all, I'm thankful to God this morning because he allowed me to see another day. I'm thankful to God this morning because he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary that I might have the right to the tree of life. I'm thankful this morning because God came with his saving and amazing grace that watched over all of us while we were coming from where we were to where we are now. Even when I was born and in the hospital and they didn't think I was going to make it, but look at me now and I can just shout and wave my hands and say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, because you've been a wonderful God to me. Everybody has a praise this morning. Everybody has a shout. And don't just stand there or sit there and not open your mouth. Give God what belongs to him. His praises belongs to him. Glory belongs to him. Thank you, Jesus, not only for who you are, but what you've done for us. Yes, yes, the Thanksgiving is just a few days away, and we should give thanks to God for all the goodness and mercy that he stores upon us. Don't be like other folk who will forget or ignore or somewhere resent because of things happen in their life. Let's not be among those folks. Let's be the ones that give him the glory, give him the praise, and give him what is due to him. Even during the midst of the virus, disappointment, heartache, and whatever else may stop you from thinking God, because every day, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day you wake up, you should thank God. Every day your feet hit the floor, you should thank God. We should thank God for all our days. Yes, yes, leading up to today. We, 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 we could have been sick and in the hospital, but God, we could have been dead in the grave, but God, I don't know about you, but I can't be silent knowing that God has blessed me beyond measures. He keeps on blessing me, and I'm thankful for the little blessings that I have. I may not have a Rolls Royce, but I thank you for the little truck that I do have. I may not have a mansion on the hill, but I thank you for the house that I do have. I may not have a whole lot of money in my pocket, but I thank you for the two or three nickels and pennies that I do have. I'm thankful this morning. Yes, yes, I'm thankful. Verse 1 says, shout joyful to the Lord all the earth. Shout is defined as speaking with a loud voice and often as loud as possible. We should be shouting to the top of our voice, thank you, Jesus. Some translations say make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You see, we don't have a problem shouting at the football game. 
but we have a very, very seldom raise our voice in church. Stop worrying about what people say because they don't know your story and they don't know where you, what you've been through. Yes, they don't know how, how many times that you had didn't have money to put gas in your car. They, but God made a way. They don't know about the abusive relationship that you were in, but God brought you out of that relationship. They don't know about the times that you didn't have food to feed your children when they were hungry, but God made a way anyway. They didn't know about the times you were sick and nobody knew but yourself, but you call on the name of the Lord and he came to see about you and you can raise your hands and say, thank you, God. Yes, thank you. Be thankful for all that he's done. Verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with a joyful song. We should be cheerful and happy when we come to church. Let, be, let us be free to render. Let us be on an occasion of joy for the soul. The benefit of God's source at the highest joy that is known to man. The highest praise is hallelujah. We should be running into the church saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It also means that when you serve God, we understand it's not for entertainment or something that somebody makes you do. You should serve God because He worship, you worship him. He's done something for you. He's made a way out of no way. He, when you were sick, he healed you. When you didn't have money, he provided for you. You should be coming to church praising the name of the Lord. Yeah, on Sunday, some Sunday mornings, I used to see people sitting in the pews with long faces and sitting there like they didn't have anything to be thankful for. But Bethel, I came to tell you this morning, you should be thankful just because God woke you up this morning. Nobody had to help you out of the bed. You had health and strength. If that's not enough to be thankful for, I don't know what is. Come on now. Church, we got to come before the Lord. We ought to be glad to come before the Lord. We shouldn't come here with long faces. We shouldn't come here with disappointment, even though we get disappointed. But God said, I'll supply all of your needs. He'll take care of you no matter what you go through. Yes, when man turn their back on you, God is right there for you. Come on now, come on now. When folk talk about you, God is right there with you. You see, we got to understand that we serve an awesome, uh, uh, awesome God. The God that says, I will be there when nobody else will. Yes, if, 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 if your friends say no, he says yes. If the doctor said, I give up on you, God said, I'm right there to step in. But we have to realize that we have something to be glad about. We can be glad because Jesus sits high and he looks low and he has all power in his hands. That's what we have to be glad about. Then the third verse says, know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not ourselves. I'm so glad this morning I didn't make myself. I'm so glad God made me. Even though I may not be what you think I might look like, I need to look like, but God made me. Even though I may not talk like you want me to talk, but God made me. I'm glad God made me for his purpose and not man's purpose. See, because man will build you up and he'll take you down. But when God builds you up, you up now. You ain't got to worry about what man said. You have to work. Don't think about what God said that you are. God said that you are the head and not the tail. You are first and not last. Yes, yes, I'm glad that I didn't make myself. We must understand that God is Lord and we are not. That's a whole nother sermon. Sometimes we think we God. We think we need to tell people what Thus says the Lord, I tell people what we think they should have. But I, we don't have any business putting anybody anywhere that God don't want them to be. Amen. If it's for you, y'all, you can get it. 
And don't worry about it if you don't get it. Because God may have something better in store for you than what you think you ought to have. So stop trying to play God. And let God be who he is. Let God be God. And you get out of the way because you're just in his way making things. Lord have mercy. Let me move on. See, God created us in his image. Not in mere your image, in his image. That means he knows the hairs on our head. Although I ain't got none. But he even know the scalp. That the little hair's trying to come up. See, because God is our creator. He's our shepherd. He is the lover of our life. He is our redeemer. He is the one that gives us life. He is the one that blew the breath of life in us. He is the one that created all of us. I'm going to move on. I start to say something, but I better leave that off. Somebody might make some calls on me, so I'm going to go on to the next thing. <laughs> we must acknowledge him to be God as well as man because he was God and he was human and divine. Though man yet nearly not man, but God and our Savior, our true God gives us eternal life. In him we live, move, and have our beings as new creatures, we are his workmanship, created in him and by him, regenerated by the spirit and the grace and formed for himself, his glory for service. So this means that we are nothing without him. But I'm thankful this morning because he made us. And after all, without him, we are nothing. We are lifeless. We're breathless. We are motionless. Without him. Yeah, I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that one day I did find the Lord. That I did harden my heart. I did go to the Lord in prayer and say, save, or save me, Lord, because I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I want to be with you. I want you to be with me. I want you to show me how to walk. I want you to show me how to talk. I want you to show me how to live. And this is the verse that I like more than any of them. And it fits our sermon topic. It said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We need to give God thanks and bless his name. The gates represent jurisdictions of dwelling, of strength, power, dominion. We enter God's gates on our way to his throne. This means that we come into the place of worship, the public place of worship. You come with the idea of giving thanks to God. Amen. You come waiting to get with other believers so that all of us can praise God. All of us can say hallelujah. All of us can say thank you, Jesus, because we witness to one another about what we've been through and where God has brought us from. And if the Bible says it, in one of these verses, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? I still would be in the world if it had not been for the Lord. I still would be clapping if it had not been for the Lord. I still would be drinking if it had not been for the Lord. I still would be doing things that is not pleasing in his sight if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. See, a lot of folks say they're on your side, but they'll turn their back on you. But you ain't got to worry about God turning your back on you. He'll be right there for you. A lot of people tap you on the back and say, I got you. But soon as the road get rough, soon as the mountain get too hard to climb, as soon as they see another way that's better than what you got, they go. But thanks be to God. He stands with me, stands with us, no matter how the way may seem. No matter how bad it looks, he's there. No matter how good it looks, he's always there with us. Yes, you can't thank God. You can't give thanks unless you got a thankful heart. Thanksgiving 
is what flows out of a thankful heart. Beth, we need to be thankful to God for what he has done in our life and in the life of the church. Be thankful is so much more than a private prayer or public proclamation. Being thankful is an expression through your attitude in living life. Being thankful that you do not already have everything you want. If you had everything, you wouldn't have nothing to look forward for. And if we had everything, we wouldn't thank God because we would need, we would feel that we don't need God. It's about like a person I know that address is on Pennsylvania Avenue. They say he don't have anything to repent for. But brother, I want to tell you that all of us have something to repent for. Amen. All of us have done wrong. Amen. All of us have scandalized somebody's name. All of us have talked about somebody. All of us have done wrong. But thanks be to God and his saving grace, he allow us to have another chance. The Bible says he forgives us 70 times 7. There's no perfect human being on this earth that I know of. The only perfect person was here, died, went to the grave, and rose again. The songwriter used these words. When upon life billows are tempers and toss, you are discouraged. Think all is lost. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Name them one by one and see what the Lord has done. And I'm finished. But verse five says, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. For the Lord is good. He is the good shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep. And he's the good Samaritan that poured all in wine of love and grace and his precious blood to heal the wounds made by sin. While he was on earth, he went about doing good to the body and the soul of men. He continued to do good among them. Therefore, we should be praising and serving and worshiping the Almighty God. God has been faithful to our ancestors, our parents, and to us, and will be faithful to our children's children. If we believe what the, what the Word tells us about His mercy is everlasting, because everlasting means forever. How many know that grace is mercy is everlasting and everlasting and everlasting? Just think about what our ancestors went through and they depend on God and God had brought them and he brought our parents and now he's bringing us. And just think about our children. He's going to bring our children's children. That is forever. That is his mercy is forever because he still watches over us and he still have mercy upon us. When we don't have mercy for everybody else, he still have mercy for us. Paul writes in Romans 11 and 36, everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Be thankful. Well, the difficult times in your life because during those difficult times you grew. Be thankful for the mistakes that because they taught you valuable lessons. We have to be thankful for everything. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine and the rain. Thank you, Lord, for the good times and the bad times. Thank you, Lord, for the mountains and the hurdles that you brought us through. In everything, be thankful to God. Be thankful to God. God, thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for doing all that you do for us. Thank you, God, this morning. We just say thank you. Thank you. 
The Bible says, oh, give thanks because he is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Do I have any witnesses to know that God is good? And all the time he's good. Just think about where you are today. Just think about where the Lord has brought you from. Just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving a wretch like us. My friends, we ought to give God praise. Our thanksgiving and our worship need to be directed to God and God by himself. We need to be thankful for what he's done. So on this Thanksgiving holiday, without restrictions or limitations, with all the restrictions and all the limitations because of the virus and everything else going on, my prayer for all of us is that God receives the glory because without him, there is no thanksgiving. Without him, there is no praise because he deserves it all. If it had not been for God who created the world and put us in it, there would be no need to give thanks. Be thankful for your family and friends even though we may not be able to gather together as we did usual, but be thankful for them. Get on Facebook, get on Zoom, and just have a good time. But most of all, give God what belongs to him. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, God, for the food on the table. Thank you, God, for the fellowship. Thank you because my family is, is, is healthy. Even though the virus has come, we still healthy. God still made a way for us not to be not to have the virus and not to be dead from the virus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God has made a way for us during these uncertain times. We could have been dead and gone, but God allow us to be here. Yes, he did. And I'm thankful this morning. So let's not be like those who are ungrateful, who are unappreciative. Show that you are appreciative for all that you have. And like I said earlier, you may not have what I have and I may not have what you have, but thank God for the little bit I do have. Because if I take care of what he gave me, he's gonna bless me with more. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for the members of this church. Thank you for my family. Thank you just for waking up this morning because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody couldn't get out of bed on their own. Somebody couldn't wash their own self this morning. Somebody didn't have food to eat. Somebody didn't even have a roof over their head. But look at us. We got it all. And to all we owe to him. So be thankful and have a great and wonderful Thanksgiving holiday because it is him, the Bible says, who is able to keep us from falling. And when we fall, we get back up. I'm grateful this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful just to be standing here one more time. If I don't stand here next Sunday, I'm grateful for being here today. I'm grateful because we serve a grateful and awesome God. We deserve all of our praise. Amen. Amen. And amen.
your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus went to the cross and died for us but on the third day he arose from the dead you only thing you have to do is say Lord I confess all of my sins I give my life to you I want to be a part of what you have in store for me I give my life freely to you that's the only thing you have to do Now, as we do our altar call prayer, we know there are several who are in the hospital and several who are sick that need our prayer. So we're going to pray for them, and we may not call them by name, but they knew who they, we know who they are. Because there's some names that we don't know, but God knows them all. So here we are, Lord, on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Even though every day is a day of Thanksgiving, right now at this present moment in this present place, we give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. Because right now, while the blood is still running warm in our veins, we can lift our hands and say hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Thank you, Jesus, because you allow us another opportunity at life. You allow us another day to try to get our life in order. Thank you, God, for your son Jesus who died on the cross that we might have the right to the tree of life. God, we ask that you go by the hospitals right now. Go by the nursing homes. Go by the homes of our sick and shut in. Go by the homes of the sick in all of the world. Touch them right now. Let them feel your presence. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing among our lives this morning. We declare healing among the sick, whether they're home or in the hospital or the nursing home. We declare healing. God, you said in your word, ask and it shall be given. We ask you right now to come and wrap your loving arms of protection all around us. Lord, some may be going through depression. Some may be going through relationship problems. Some may have financial problems. Some of them are just fed up with the world and don't know which way to turn. But God, let them know that you are right there with them. Let them know that even in the midst of storms, in the midst of trouble, you said in your word you'll never leave us nor forsake us that you'll be with us even to the end of time. God, we want to be just like the woman who had the issue of blood. We just want to touch the hem of your garment and we'll be made whole. God, we thank you right now for this community. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the members of this church. God created all of us a clean heart and a right spirit that we may do the will that you require us to do. No songwriter say, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Is he all right with you this morning? Because he's all right with me. Jeremiah says, it's just like fire, shut up in your bones. You can't keep it to yourself. I gotta tell somebody about a Savior that can save anybody. Tell somebody about a Savior that came and rescued you from wherever you've been going. Thank you, Lord for being who you are. If you don't do anything else, thank you for what you've done. God bless us and bless the families, oh God, who are less fortunate and may not have what we have. We ask, oh God, that we provide a way for them. As the text read earlier, they didn't see you when you were hungry, they didn't clothe you when you were naked, they didn't give you anything to drink, but God let us be 
the light of the world. Let us be the one that feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and give the ones who are thirsty something to drink. But most of all, we're thankful because of you. And God, as we go in this Thanksgiving holidays, let us give all our glory and thanks to you. Because it's not what we've done, it's what you gave us. What you thought we was deserving of. And we praise your name for that. These and all other blessings we ask in the wonderful and magnificent name of your son, Aston Christoph. Let every heart say amen. 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 Have a great holiday, great Thanksgiving. Remember, there will be a food drive giveaway here on Tuesday, the 12th. And we thank the Lee County First Steps and save the children for the opportunity to serve our community as we do the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of his lovable and adorable children. And the peace of God reign in our lives. Why am the community saying, Amen. Let the two